those radiuses are too big for some of the species with which we work. And here is one of my assistants following birds this past year. All right, we now have four years' worth of data on lex size and dispersion, on male fidelity. We have information on movement patterns, male relations, and mating success for most of these four species, though the data certainly aren't evenly distributed. The data are also not all analyzed, so I can't give you definitive answers about the support of different models and different explanations of the evolution of lek behavior. I can point out, however, that it's not going to be a nice, clear, neat, and tidy picture. Most of our evidence supports the hotshot model, thank goodness. Uh, some of our evidence supports the hotspot model. Some of our evidence is in conflict with the hotshot model, and some is in conflict with the hotspot. So, what does this mean? Basically, I am not sure that we are going to have a single unifying theory of left evolution. I'm not ruling it out but I'm not sure that we're going to find it. The thing is that each of the models that we have, and probably some that haven't been developed yet, were developed on the basis of studies of different groups of organisms. Uh, Bruce Beeler and I studied birds of paradise and mannequins. Jack Bradbury and Robert Gibson studied grouse and bats. Other people are studying fishes and insects. And so what I suspect that we're going to find is that although the same ecological conditions may have favored the evolution of the same type of system in all of these groups, the pathways that they followed to get there were probably different. Well, I would hope that maybe I can come back and give another Arrington lecture in about 2005, and at that time, maybe I would have a more definitive answer. The only thing I can say for sure is that this problem is certainly going to provide us with a lot of interesting intellectual challenges for a lot of years to